The riches you have are much more valuable than a new vehicle or a dream vacation or a mansion. Do you know how to judge the value of something? You know, one of the best ways to judge something of value is about how long it will last. You know, there's a common saying that says they sure don't make things like they used to. You know, this means that the things that were made 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 years ago lasted longer than they do today. And so the, the cheap plastic parts of today are a waste of money and therefore are not as valuable. I, I, I have things that break and I take them apart and I look and I'm amazed that they thought that these plastic gears would actually last. Do you remember that diamond commercial on TV where the slogan was, a diamond is forever? This idea is that, you know, diamond are, diamonds are valuable because diamonds last forever. Why flowers fade and chocolates get eaten. If you really want to show your love, a love that'll last forever, don't go on a second honeymoon, but buy a diamond. Because while a second honeymoon will end, a diamond is forever. The reality is that diamonds are not forever. Even though your diamond will last a long time, it doesn't really matter because you can't take your diamonds with you into the next life. When we die, and if we go to heaven or we go to the other place, to hell, those things are going to have no spiritual value for us. You're not going to be able to take them with you. There are no U-Hauls behind hearses. And those things actually have no spiritual value while you're here on earth. But see, the riches that you have as a Christian can go with you when you die and you have them while you're here on earth. And that's what makes these riches so valuable. They last forever and ever and ever. They're eternal. They're yours now and yours to enjoy for eternity in heaven. You say, but I don't want them in heaven. I want them now. I, don't, I won't need them in heaven. I need them now. In the letter to the church, Paul explains that riches are what they are and how we can draw on them for effective Christian living. You know, these true riches belong to all Christians from the time that we first trust in Jesus. And even though we might not be able to fully enjoy them right now, one day we will enjoy them fully in glory. Even so, they can fill our hearts with joy today. See, we have all the spiritual blessings. The, this, this phrase, all the spiritual blessings, can be translated as all the blessings of the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit of God. We can ignore anyone who comes to us to show us some special way to get extra blessings because we already have them all in Christ. And we do not ever need to feel any more or any less blessed than any other believer. God has provided everything we need to live a full Christian life now and enjoy all the future blessings in eternity. You know, there are some people who teach that you need to pray for more blessings. You need to ask God to give you a second blessing or another blessing or a greater blessing than you already have. But that's what, not what Paul says. Paul says that God has already given to us all the blessings that there are. You don't need a second blessing. You don't need someone to pray over you to receive another blessing. You already have them all. And the amazing word here is all. Every believer in Christ has received every possible blessing from God. None of them are withheld. Now, we may all have different spiritual gifts and different ministries and different callings and different circumstances, but we all possess every spiritual blessing in Christ. God has already given to you everything you need for life and for godliness. 2 Peter 1.3 says his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Has somebody told you that you are lacking in some spiritual blessing? Don't believe it. It's a lie. 
God has already given to you every spiritual blessing. Not some spiritual blessings, not a few spiritual blessings, but every spiritual blessing. And what this means is that you don't have to go searching for more blessings. You just need to discover what God has already given to you and then start using them and living in them. Now, notice also that this text, that that these these are spiritual blessings. While while God does give us some physical blessings and material blessings and health blessings, we must not give in to another false teaching which says that if you want something, like a Rolls Royce or Cadillac or a million dollars in your bank account or a perfect health or a perfect attitude, all you have to do is name it and claim it. If If you just think it, it'll happen. You know, there are plenty of promises in the Bible for material provisions. But they are that that God will meet all your needs, not your wants. And you do not need a luxury car, a million dollars. The riches and blessings of Ephesians 1 through 3 are entirely spiritual. And you already have them. You don't need to do anything to get more of them. So as we go through them, don't begin to think that I'm talking about your unpaid bills or that new boat you want or that new house you want. That's not what these chapters are about. Because see, God's church, his body is a spiritual building. And he has given us spiritual riches to build it. 